Hi, so for today we're going to talk about electric field. So what is an electric field? So electric field is basically an area where electrical force can be experienced. So electric field has many applications such as in mobile communications, in antennas, in our radio systems, and many, many more. Okay, so let's go. Electric field. So electric field, as I have said a while ago, is defined as the area where electrical force can be experienced. So this is the key. Every charged body creates an electric field in the space around it. As we can see here in our first figure, we have a charged body, a positive charged body. Let's call that A. And we have a test charge or a very small amount of charge, Q sub O. Let's call that B. So because according to Coulomb's law, there is a force that exists between these two charges. And again, the principle is always true that if we have two like charges, positive and positive, they always repel. So the force is repulsion. Okay? There is a force of repulsion. So what happens is that this Q sub O or this test charge is a very, very small amount of charge. Okay? To the point that it's negligible. So what will happen, class, is that if we remove this test charge and replace it simple as P, point P, okay, removing that charge and replacing that at, at, as point P, what will happen is in the third figure, the body A sets up an electric field vector E at point P. So what happens is that there exists an electric field at this point due to due to this test charge, okay, and it's in this direction, going outside, going outward. Why? Because technically speaking, when we talk about electric field, oops, when we talk about electric field, so for electric field, we have <coughs> a if we have a positive charge. It turns out by convention that its electric field always points radially outward into space. So remember, my drawing is just a simple representation of the electric field. So, yeah. so for positive charge, the electric field is always pointing radially outward okay, in 3D. Okay? So, but for a negative charge, the electric field caused by an electric negative electric charge always points radially inward to itself. Okay? So, for a negative charge, that is the convention. It's always point, pointing radially inward. Okay? So, and basically, when we go back to our slide, electric field is the force per unit charge exerted by this uh, charge body A on a test charge at P. So in other words, electric field is defined as the electric field is equals to the force on that test charge over that test charge. So it means that by Coulomb's law, if we're going to analyze force, that should be KQ times Q sub 0, where Q is the large charge body, then divided R squared, KQ 1 Q2 over R squared, but in this case, KQ over Q0, or times Q0 divided by R squared, divided by Q0. So what will happen is that this Q0 or Q sub 0 will become cancelled, and we are left with KQ R squared. And as we can see here, here is another formula for electric field. Remember that electric field is also a vector. So basically, it has a magnitude n, direction okay 
So again, the K is the Coulomb's constant. The Q is the charge divided by the R squared, wherein this is the square of the distance from the charge where the electric field is to be calculated. Okay, so we have here. Okay, that is an electric field. That's the basic concept of electric field. So what happens next is body A produces or causes body A produces or causes an electric field at point P. This is electric field is present at point P even there is no charge at P. So because basically what we have said a while ago, if we have a single charge, okay, this is a very important concept. If you have a single charge, there will always be the presence of an electric field, regardless of what charge it is, okay? A positive or negative. So it is the consequence of the charge on body A only. So that if we're going to remove that, there is still an electric field at that point. So another definition of electric field, an electric field exists at a point if a test charge at that point experiences a force. So we have defined that a while ago. So for our formula for electric field, I've showed that already that electric field is basically equal to Kq over R squared, or that is the per force per unit test charge. So where E is our electric field, and the unit of electric field is actually Newton per Coulomb. And K is still the Coulomb's constant, which is basically equal to 9 times 10 raised to 9 Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. And Q, small k Q, is the charge in Coulomb. Okay? And R is the distance from the charge to point P on where the electric field is to be calculated. Okay? So, and F here is the electrical force in Newton, basically in Coulomb's law. And Q sub O is the test charge or the very small amount of charge. Okay, so again, we have the formula KQ over R squared for our electric field. And again, the unit of electric field is Newton per Coulomb. But uh, in terms of volts, it can also have a, a unit, a unit of uh, volts per meter. Okay, anyway that is in the deeper concept of electric field but for now the SI unit is Newton per Coulomb. So let's have here an example or a figure A and B. So this test charge Q sub O we can actually uh, what do you call this we can actually use a positive test charge or a negative test charge okay so for the first figure if Q is positive, this Q is positive, the force of the test charge is directed away from Q. Okay? The force on the test charge is directed away <coughs> from Q. So what happens is that since this is a positive test charge, this is also a positive, uh, this is a positive charge Q, this is a positive test charge Q sub O. So what happens is that they try to repel each other. So the force that this test charge experience because of this Q here is in this direction because it tries to repel this Q naught or Q sub zero or test charge as much as away as this because this is also a positive. So what happens is that if we're going to replace this test charge Q sub O with a simple point P, what will happen is that it turns out that Still, the electric field points in the same direction as the force. Okay, why? Why? Because this positive test charge, as we have said a while ago, is that this positive, the positive test charge has, or the positive charge is has an electric field that points radially outward. Okay, so we have an electric field that is going with the same direction of the force. Okay. That is for the positive test charge. So what happens is if we have still a positive test charge Q sub zero or Q naught, okay, and we have a negative charge here. So this is a positive, this is a negative test charge. So what happens, the tendency is that the force that this Q sub zero or test charge experiences is a attraction 
to this charge. Why? Because this is negative, this is positive. So the force that this test charge experiences due to this charge, Q, is in this direction. And if you're going to remove the test charge again and replace it by point P, what happens is that it turns out that the electric field points radially inward, oops, points radially inward into this negative charge. Why? Because by convention, we have said that if you have a negative charge, the electric field always points radially inward toward itself. So we have an electric field here. So the thing is, if we're going to use a positive test charge, the direction of the electric field is the same as the direction of the force. Okay? That is clear. Because if we use, if we use a negative test charge, then that's a different story. Or in other words, if we replace this negative test charge, so what will happen is that the force experienced by this due to this charge, Q, will be in the different direction, but the electric field will still be in this direction. So it's still best to use a positive test charge, Q sub O, so that you're not, you will not be confused because the direction of the electric field is the same as the direction of the force. Okay, this is very handy uh, in terms of recalling on the convention of the direction of the electric field for a positive charge and a negative charge. So, the charge Q sub O can be either positive or negative. That's what I've said a while ago. This summarizes what I've said a while ago. So, if we have a positive test charge and if we have a positive charge body Q, so it turns out that because this is positive and this is also positive, the force experienced by this test charge is going to the right. So if we replace this test charge Q sub O with simple point, still the direction of the electric field points to the right. So hence, the direction of the force okay, experienced by this test charge is the same as the direction of its electric field when it is replaced by a simple point P. What will happen is that if we have a negative test charge here, is that there is a force existing here, okay? Because there is an attraction between this charge Q and negative test charge Q sub zero or Q naught. So what will happen is the force is in this direction. But still, by convention, the electric field is still in this direction. So they have now an opposite direction, the force and the electric field. So that's why it's best to use a positive test charge if you wish to recall the direction of the electric field by, well, by actually uh, determining the direction of force because if you use positive test charge, again, the direction of force is the same as the direction of the electric field. Okay? So, so it's best to use positive test charge. So, electric field of a point charge. So, as I've said a while ago, uh, <coughs> electric field can be produced by a single point charge because of the equation we have shown a while ago. That is this. So, let me just rewrite this. Okay? E is equals to KQ over R squared. We are only requiring one charge Q in order to establish an electric field. So what happens here is that uh, the force by Coulomb's law is given by this formula. So it turns out that the magnitude of E electric field at that point P is will now be this because technically we have derived that a while ago here. Okay? But it turns out in this in this uh, slide that this 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub 0 is only equivalent to what we call the Coulomb's constant. Okay? So we have discussed that. So what will happen if, uh, for example, we have many charges. Okay? Let's say we have two charges and we wish to define the electric field present at point P. Okay? Because of these two charges. So what happens is that if many charges are present in a given region, each charge, okay, each charge contributes to the electric field at a known point. The net electric field is basically the vector sum 
of all the fields of the charge charges that is E sub T or the total net electric field at that point is equal to the electric field due to charge 1, electric field plus electric field due to charge 2, plus electric field due to charge 3, plus ellipses up to the end charge. Okay, so in this example, in this example, we have two charges. Okay, we have charge Q sub 1, which is a positive charge, charge Q sub 2, which is a negative charge. So uh, the problem is actually asking is asking us what is the electric field at this point P? Okay, so let's just analyze. At point P, we have two electric fields due to we have two charges. Okay, so two charges contributes both to the electric field at that point. So what happens at, at this point P, there exists an electric field E sub 1 due to charge 1 in this direction. Why? Again, because by convention, this is a positive charge, so its electric field points radially outward. So this uh, electric field now, due to charge 1, is in this direction. No question with that. But there is also an electric field due to charge 2. And this is a negative charge. So what happens is that at point P, there is also an E sub 2 wherein E sub 2 points in this direction. Why? Because again, by convention, negative charges have an electric field that points radially inward in the charge. Okay? So inside the charge. So we have an, a vector uh, or electric field vector in this direction. So what happens is that what are we going to do is that let me just draw it for you. So we have at we have this point P, okay, and we have this uh, electric field 1 in this direction. So we have E1 electric field vector, and we have here another one, and that is the electric field due to charge 2. So it says in the figure, it says in the figure that this is the total electric field. Why? Because technically speaking, this E1, we can redraw on this side. So, it turns out we can redraw this E1 because we can manipulate vectors. Okay? So that if we're going to get the total electric field from the very first tail up to the last arrowhead of that vector, that is our total electric field. So, hence... He said that this is the total electric field E at point P is basically the vector sum of E1 and E2. Okay? That is correct because we can manipulate vectors. Or we can also manipulate this E2 and drag this uh, electric field onto this. And we, it will still yield the same total net electric field. Okay? So I hope you're following what I'm saying. So, a point charge Q or big letter Q produces an electric field at all points in space. That is what I've said a while ago. At all points in space, meaning uh, in 3D, okay, radially outward. So, here's the thing. The field strength decreases with increasing distance. Or vice versa, the field strength increases with decreasing distance. Okay. Why? Because technically speaking, if we're going to recall our formula for the electric field of a point charge, E is equals to KQ over R squared, where R squared is the square of distance at a certain point. So what happens is that if we increase the distance or the point from the charge, what will happen is that the electric field will actually be smaller. One application of that is that uh, imagine if you are uh, uh, having your surfing the net diba? while you are on a vacation or in, in your house. Okay, so the, the farther you get away from the router, the lower the signal of the Wi Fi you will get. Why? Because your Wi Fi signal is also composed of electric field. So, what happens is that by this equation, we can show 
that if you go away from the router which is this the, the test charge source if you go away from the router that means you're increasing the distance away from the router so what happens is that your field strength or the electric field decreases so that's why if you are actually uh, what will happen if you uh, went near to the modem then you are actually decreasing your distance to that test charge so it happen what happens is that your Wi-Fi signal is at maximum or will increase okay so that's basically the concept so for example we have a test charge here positive and negative so again positive test charge has a an electric field that points radially outward so what happens is that if we have a positive test charge here uh, we can see that there are different sizes of the vector here vector uh, the magnitude of the electric field so it turns out that if you're going to focus at this point at this point okay at this point so the electric field at this point is basically much greater than the electric field at this point again why because this point is actually nearer than this point so uh, the, the the electric field strength is represented by the length of the arrow so as you can see the length of the vector here is much longer compared to here because again the electric field strength or the electric field at this point is greater than this why because it's a matter of their, their distance this is much closer to here so it has is a bigger electric field or a larger electric field here at this point and this is farther than uh this is farther than this point so that its electric field is much smaller compared to this point and the same for the electric fields for a negative test charge or negative charge so the field produced by a negative point charge points towards the charge and that's what i'm trying to say so that the electric field points toward the charge so it turns out last that the electric field at this point is much smaller compared to the electric field at this point why because this the electric field at this point is much is farther than this okay okay or farther this is this is farther this point is farther than this point so that the electric fields are actually what greater in this point than this okay so electric field lines is an imaginary line or curve drawn through a region of space and is represented by drawing lines so basically we cannot see electric field lines or electric field so uh, it's beyond the human uh, I mean the uh, human side okay so michael faraday introduced the concept field of lines or the concept of field lines he called them he called them lines of force but the term field lines is preferable so here we can see a field electric field produced by a single positive charge okay and here we have a two equal magnitude charge but with opposite sign here we have positive charge and we, we, we have the negative charge so we have here the respective field lines so it turns out that the field lines emanates from the positive to negative so we're not violating any convention for the electric fields so here the electric field along here is much stronger compared to the electric field around here okay so at each point in space the electric field vector okay, or the electric field vector is tangent to the field line passing through that point so here if we have two charges two equal and opposite charges we call that a dipole okay so yeah so here on the third figure we have two equal positive charges and again the electric field is always tangent to a point on every field lines and the wonderful thing about the uh, electric field lines of two charges let's say negative both positive in this example their field lines never intersect 
each other. Okay? They never, never intersect. Okay? So, so it's time now for us to compute uh, some problems. Okay? Let's apply. So, our equation is still, let's say, E is equals to KQ over R squared. Okay? That is our equation. So, what is the magnitude for number one? What is the magnitude of the electric field at a point 2 meters from a point charge Q or nanocoulomb? So, we have here, we are given with the K, and that is equivalent to 9 times 10 raised to 9. That is a constant, Newton meter squared per column squared. Multiply it by Q. Our Q is 4 nanocoulomb, 4 times 10 raised to negative 9. Okay, negative 9 coulomb. That is divided by, what? 2 meters. So, 2.0 meters squared. So, if we're going to calculate that, that should be 9 times 10 raised to 9, 4 times 10 raised to negative 9, 2 squared, that should be 9 newton per column. Okay? That is the magnitude of the electric field at 2 meters away from this point or from this charge, 4.0 nanocoulomb. Okay? That is our answer. For number 2, Find the magnitude of the electric field 50 cm from an electron. Okay? So again, we don't have any other formulas. We have K, Q over R squared. But it turns out here, our charge is now an electron. So K, Q sub E, that is the charge of electron over R squared. So and again, we have the Coulomb's constant, 9 times 10 raised to 9, Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. Multiply it by... The charge of an electron, again, we are talking about magnitude here. So, we're not going to include the sign of the negative for the charge of an electron. So, we have 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19 Coulomb. That is divided by the R squared, 50 cm. We must convert that into meter. So, we have 0 0.5 meter squared. And our answer for that should be 9 times 10 raised to 9, 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 19, over 0.5 squared. Okay. So, what should be an ans our answer? 5.76 76 times 10 raised to 9 newton per, I mean raised to negative 9 newton per column. Okay, so for number three, two charges okay, of negative 5 nanocoulomb. So we have charge 1, that is equal to negative 5 times 10 raised to negative 9 coulomb. And we have charge 2, u sub 2, negative 3 times 10 raised to negative 9 coulomb are 1.5 meters apart. Compute for the electric field halfway between them. So if we're going to draw that, these two are both negative charge. As we have seen here, we have the negative sign. So, that implies that it is a negative charge. So, it turns out that these two charges are actually 1.5 meters apart. So, we can label that as 1.5 meters apart. So, what are we going to compute for the electric field halfway between them? So if this is the, the center between them, we're going to compute what is the electric field halfway at that point. Okay? So let us realize that at this very point, we have two electric fields. Okay? So we have an electric field in this direction. Oops. We have an electric field in this direction. And we have also an electric field in this direction. So, the electric field in this direction, well, is actually because of the charge 1. And the electric field in this direction is because of the electric, of the electric field due to charge 2. Okay? So, we have now opposite directions. So, it turns out that also that the distance 
of this point from this is 0 0.75 meters because it is halfway between them. So this is also 0 0.75 meters. So that if we're going to compute the electric field due to charge 1 first, E sub 1, we have uh, KQ sub 1 over R squared. That should be 9 times 10 raised to negative 9 Coulomb. Multiply it by the magnitude of the charge, let's say. Still magnitude, don't include the sign. So 5 times 10 raised to negative 9 Coulomb divided by R squared. Our R squared is 0 0.75 meters squared. And for E sub 2, the same thing, KQ sub 2 over R squared. So we have 9 times 10 raised to negative 9. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, this is positive 9, not negative 9. Okay. So this should be raised to 9 Coulomb. Okay. That's the Coulomb's constant. Times the magnitude of the charge, 3 times 10 raised to negative 9 Coulomb, divided by 0 0.75 meters squared. So if we're going to compute that, 9 times 10 raised to 9, 5 times 10 raised to negative 9, 0 0.75 squared, that is 80. This is 80 Newton per Coulomb. And this one is 9 times 10 raised to 9, 3 times 10 raised to negative 9. 0 0.75 square that is 48 newton per column now let us realize that these vectors are actually uh, that these electric fields are vectors so the total net electric field halfway between them is actually what e sub 2 goes to the right so 48 Newton per column that is positive minus E sub 1 that is 80 Newton per column and if we're going to minus that or subtract that so we have 48 minus 80 that is equivalent to negative 32 Newton per column so again this negative value indicates that the total net electric field, its direction is going to the left. So we can say that is 32 newton per column going left. Okay. So this is our answer. Okay. So for our next questions or question. Question number four, two charges are 3.5 picocoulomb and four picocoulomb are 0 0.3 meters apart. So we have two positive charges. Again, we know that that is a positive charges because uh, there are no negatives okay, in their charge. So that the, the distance between these two charges is actually 0 0.3 meters apart. Okay, they are 0 0.3 meters apart. The distance is exaggerated. Okay, 0 0.3 meters apart. Where along the line joining them will the net electric field be zero? So, where along the line joining them? So, in between them, in between this distance 0 0.3, there is an electric field that is zero. Okay, the net electric field will be zero. So, Let's say we don't know, we really don't know where is the electric field between them will be zero. So, let me just try to have an arbitrary point here. Let's say this is the point where the net electric field will be zero. So, and this point, we don't know the distance between this point and this. So, we label this as our x. We don't know the distance. And also this... So, if this is 0 0.3 meters, their distance is 0 0.3 meters, and this is x, so probably this should be 0 0.3 minus x. So, that is basically the distance of this charge to this point. Okay, so that if we're going to add this x plus 0 0.3 minus x, simply we get 0 0.3. Okay, so we're along the line joining them with the net electric field be 0. So, what are we going to do is that we analyzed also the directions of the electric field. So, 
there is an electric field in this direction that is the electric field let's label this a charge 1 as charge 2 that is now the electric field due to what due, due to charge 1 because it points radially outward now this will now be there is an electric field also in this direction so let's call this e2 so that is the electric field due to charge 2 because again by convention if you have positive charge their electric field goes radially upward so what are we going to do okay so by summation the total net electric field at that point at this point p is simply going to the right we have positive e1 minus e2 okay but it says in the problem that the total net electric field is zero so we can replace this as zero is equals to e sub one minus e sub two or rewriting this so we have simply e sub one is equals to e sub two so what are we going to do is we have kq one over r sub one squared is equals to k q2 over r sub 2 squared remember they don't have the same distance so i label this as r sub 1 and r sub 2 they don't have the same distance at this point p so as you can see in this equation this will be cancelled our k will be cancelled so we are left with q1 over r sub 1 squared is equals to q2 over r sub 2 squared okay so what is r sub 1 squared so we have q sub 1 over r sub 1 squared the distance of the first charge of this first charge to that point and that is simply what that is simply x squared okay so equals the q2 over the distance of this charge to at this point and that is equivalent to 0 0.3 minus x squared okay so we have the values for charge 1 and charge 2. We have for charge 1, we have 3.5 and 4 picoulomb. So we have 3.5 picoulomb over x squared. So we have 4.0 picoulomb over 0 0.3 minus x squared. So what can we do for now is to cross multiply. So if we cross multiply this, we're going to have 4.0 picoulomb divided by 3.5 picoulomb. Okay, and we have 0 0.3 minus x squared over x squared. So what happens is that this picoulomb will cancel. 4 over 3.5 is, if I'm not mistaken, that is equivalent to 1.143. Okay, so 1.143. We can multiply the x squared, cross multiply. So we have now x squared that is equivalent to 0 0.3 minus x squared. Expanding this equation or this side of the equation. So now we have 1.143 x squared is equals to uh, 0. Point first, 0 0.0 0.09. Okay, so 0 0.3 squared is 0 0.9. 0 0.9 minus 0. What? 0. 0.6x plus x squared. Okay? So 2 times the negative of 0. 0.3 times x, that is negative 0. 0.6x. So what happens is that we're going to uh, transpose all of this equation to the other side. We have 1.143 x squared minus x squared uh, plus, oops, plus 0 0.6. Oh, let me just uh, erase this and replace this by a good plus sign. Okay, so plus 0 0.6 x minus 0 0.09 is equals to 0. Those things, so this is simply 1.140 minus 1. So that would be 0 0.143 x squared plus 0 0.6 minus 0 0.09 that is equivalent to 0. So by quadratic equation, we can solve this. We can label this as A. We can label this as 
B and we can label this as C. So we have two roots, so we have to get the roots by using the quadratic equation, negative B, positive or minus B squared minus 4AC over 2A. So getting the first value of X, we have the negative of B, negative of 0 0.6 square root of the B squared. B squared is 0 0.6 squared minus 4 times A. Our A is 0 0.143 times the value of C, that is negative 0 0.09 divided by twice the A. So our A is 0 0.143. So our result for our X sub 1 is Z, negative 0 0.6 square root of, oops, positive plus, I forgot to add a plus here. So plus square root of 0 0.6 squared minus 4 and 0 0.143 negative 0 0.09 divided by 2 times 0 0.143. So we have 0 0.145 meters, 0 0.145 meters rounded off to the third decimal. But let's check also the other x sub 2. Okay, or the x sub 2 by simply changing this positive into negative. So, negative 0 0.6 minus the square root of 0 0.6 squared minus 4 times 0 0.143. And that is equivalent to minus 0 point, negative 0 0.09 divided by the twice of 0 0.143. So if we, we are going to compute for that, so we will be getting, I think, a negative answer. So this is 0, negative 4.34. So this is not a valid answer because there is no negative distance. And according to our problem, the distance of the <clears throat> between the, the charges is only 0 0.3 meters. So this is an acceptable value, the first value that we got, 0 0.145 meters. So at 0 0.145 meters away from the X or the first charge, what will happen is that the net electric field will become 0. Okay. So now we are down to our last example. So we have a point charge Q negative 8.0 nanocoulomb is located at the origin. So in this example, we have an X and Y coordinate. We're in our, oops, we're in, we have a charge in our origin. So that is a negative charge. Okay. So this is our Y axis and X axis. Forgive me for my not so very straight drawing. I'm having a hard time using this wacom, right? So, for example, this is our origin. And at the origin, there is a negative charge. So, the value of that charge is negative 8.0 nanocoulomb. So, find the electric field at vector at the point x is equals to, let's say this is 1.2 meters away from the origin, and y is equals to negative 1.6 meters away. Uh, from the y-axis. So, in other words, if you, if you plot the point, if you plot the point, this should be our point. Okay? okay? That should be our point. So, the question is, what is the direction of the electric field at this point? So, this since this is a negative charge, the direction of the electric field should be in this Oops, should be in this direction. So that should be our electric field. Okay? So, what are we going to do? First, is we're going to determine the distance of this point at the charge in order for us to get the magnitude of the electric field at that point. So we don't know the distance, so we're going to compute. Let's say that this is the charge at the origin and down below this is 1.6 meters and 
the horizontal distance is basically 1.2 meters and this is now the point because actually if we're going to plot the 1.2 meters here this is still this is the same as the distance as here so if you're going to have this r or compute this r simply that is by the Pythagorean theorem so we have the r is equals to the square root of 1.6 squared plus 1.2 squared so that is equivalent actually to I, if I'm not mistaken that is equivalent to 5 okay so 2 I mean 2 2 meters okay 2 meters so we can get the magnitude e so we can get the magnitude e kq 9 times 10 is to 9 I won't write the unit anymore times the q magnitude so we need not to include the negative sign 8 nano column divided by 2 meters squared and that is equivalent to 9 times 10 raised to 9 8 times 8 times 10 raised to negative 9 divided by 2 squared which is 4 which it turns out that the magnitude of the electric field is 18 newton per column okay do we get the answer no not yet because the problem is actually asking us what is the electric field vector and this is not a vector this is a uh, magnitude okay so if we're going to realize at point p okay at this point p the the electric field is in this direction so we can actually resolve this electric field into e y and e x so that is the electric field vector components that we are uh, that we are tasked to compute so what is that so if we, we wish to resolve that vector so getting e x is simply the magnitude of the electric field e times the cosine theta and the e sub y or the y component is simply e sine theta but the problem here is that what is the theta okay as you can see here from the figure from our figure of the triangle here okay we can get theta okay so that is the theta so by using the function of the tangent let's say tangent function tangent of theta that is toa opposite 1.6 over adjacent 1.2 and we get the arctan of this 1.6 over 1.2 now it would yield to a yield to an angle of arctan of 1.6 over 1.2 that is equivalent to 53.13 13 degrees yeah 13 degrees so we have now ex we can get now the x component so we have the magnitude 18 newton per column times the cosine of 53.13 degrees as well as the y component 18 newton per column sine of 53.13 degrees so we can get an answer of this 18 cosine 53.13 we have 10.8 10.8 newton per column here and we have 18 sine 53.13 that is 14.4 14.4 newton per column and again if we're going to analyze here the directions of the vectors for ex and for ey should be considered so if we resolve this electric field e into its x and y we notice that the x component points to the left so if it points to the left this should be a negative value okay, indicating that it's pointing to the left and this y is pointing upwards e sub y component so it means that we have a positive 14.14 newton per column hence the electric field vector is simply negative 10.8 
i hat that is to say a unit vector on the x direction plus 14.4 j hat that means in the the y direction a unit vector in the y direction and that is newton per column so that should be our answer so and again if we get the magnitude of this square root of negative 10.8 squared plus 14.4 squared we shall get this value 18 newton per column and that's the end of our discussion Thank you so much for listening and bearing with me with my English and with my not so good drawing. So thank you so much for listening and I hope you learned a lot in this subject. God bless you.